Hi everyone, want to be a laws geek like me? Get on the World Rugby website, download the law book, hours of endless fun, test your family and friends, see you there. Speed the game up, get more ball in play and create a more entertaining package. Does the ball travel forward out of the hands? Territorial or tactical? Scrum. We're looking for ball in, ball out. We're looking for a stable platform between the two teams, a safe engagement process, and we're looking for both teams on the hit to be still and stable, a forward pushing contest from both. Hands on the floor with the jackler, obviously we want to encourage that player to support his own body weight. Situations where hands go on the floor would normally lead us to think that they've gone past the ball and they're not in control. On occasions, if the ball carrier traps the ball underneath him, we might allow the, ball, uh, the jackaler to put his hands on the floor and then search for the ball. But at any stage where he's leaning his weight through his hands or he's waiting for the clear out to push him back onto the ball, we'd be penalising that. So there's been a slight shift in what we're looking for, but obviously the deliberate bat of a ball forward is, is quite a simple one. Where we've changed slightly is if the player has time and space to intercept the ball. If they go with one hand, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to rule deliberate knock-on. Um, if they're genuinely trying to make an attempt to catch it, they have time and space and they've read that situation, then we might just be looking at a knock-on only rather than a deliberate knock-on. The scrum, not overly differently. We, we, you probably hear the referees encouraging players to form up um, quickly and not to mill around but obviously we need to keep safety as, as paramount there so we want the players to be comfortable. Line out probably where we're going to try and gain some time back in the game by encouraging sides not to huddle and take uh, space away from the line out and give the opposition time so that they can uh, adjust the numbers but mainly to form the line out up nice and quickly. So there's been a few adjustments to the, um, the protocol in which a TMO can assist in the game. There are times we're, in, we're encouraging our TMOs if they've got a, a penalty only foul play offence to come in and tell the referee that so we can play advantage and not necessarily go to the screen to officially review that situation. Um, I believe we've worked quite hard to gain clarity especially around the, the head contact process so that we can be a little bit more streamlined but obviously player safety and getting the correct outcome still remains important to us. So if we do need to take time, we will, but hopefully that, that is less um, apparent than what we've seen in the past. We're trying not to look at the same replay uh, three or four times. So if we can get a, a decision within two or three replays, then that's something that we want to do. And we want to encourage the TMOs to be confident in what they've seen um, and relay that to the referee so we've got an idea of what we're going to see before it comes up on the screen when they come in for a check. Advantage. So two things we look at, territorial or tactical. Territorial, so has the team who has the advantage gained field position or a territory on the pitch to allow them to um, take advantage um, of that opportunity? Or a tactical advantage, so have they got the space to play? So for example, if it's a knock-on, are they able to have clear space to be able to recycle that ball um, and move forward across the advantage line? There's a couple of things we look at in relation to grounding. If the ball's on the ground, in in goal, all we're looking for an attacker to do is to press the ball. Or if the ball carrier and attacker are in possession of the ball, what we're looking for in grounding is that there's been no separation and that that player presses down on the ball. Head contact process. So first up, has there been head contact? Secondly, has there been foul play? Thirdly, what's the level of danger, high or low? Lastly, we then look at mitigation to that process.